Welcome to this episode of Inside Brush Country Sports, brought to you by South Texas Orthopedics. I'm Chris Filateo, sports editor for the Pleasanton Express. Well, area high school football couldn't be more exciting with district competition beginning for three of the four schools that we cover here. The game many sports fans circled on their calendars months ago is here for the Eagles. Pleasanton sits at 6-0 and hosts Lavernia Friday night for its first District 28-3A matchup. The Eagles clipped Crystal City 46 to nothing last week in their homecoming game. In Jordanton, the Indians extended their winning streak to five after defeating district foe George West 41 to seven at home. The tribe is now five and one overall and two and zero in district 15 two-way competition thus far. In Poteet, the Aggies were held scoreless for the first time this season after a 62 to nothing loss to S.A. Antonian. Poteet fell to one and five on the season overall and opened district 28-3A play against contender Somerset Friday. In Charlotte, the Trojans were shut out by state-ranked Fall City 58 to nothing on the road. Charlotte hosts Bruni for its District 16A Division II opener Friday. We will break down every opponent in this episode, along with coaches' interviews leading up to Friday's kickoff. And now, after earning his 100th career win while holding the clipboard for the Eagles, Pleasanton head coach Tab Dumont answers my questions about his recent milestone. Pleasanton head coach Tab Dumont after the head coach earned his 100th victory last week for the Pleasanton Eagles. Well, coach, you know, you've been here for 24 years. Out of all the victories, you know, I remember you telling me the other day your first one against Divine, the one in 07 against Gonzalez, that all, uh, those were all uh, the pinnacle of your career. Even though you guys did play for, uh, Crystal City last week, where did that measure as far as your career total? Uh, it, it was exciting. Uh, you know, uh, not necessarily just because it was Crystal City, but to be 100 and to think about all the kids I've got to coach here in Pleasanton, you know, and this group of kids we have here right now, uh, it was exciting. Now, you also mentioned how you want to get that behind you and just focus on this week's opponent. Obviously, it being district opponent, big game, but it's, you know, a couple days removed from that win. Is it still kind of sinking in as far as you've already hit that century mark? Uh, no, it hadn't sunk in yet. I don't think it will until the season's over. Once I look back and reflect and take a deep breath maybe after the season it'll sink in a little bit more but right now uh, all the focus is on Lavernia and trying to get first district win of the year great well thank you for your time again coach thank you all right now we analyze Lavernia as the Eagles host their district opener this week then I sat down with coach Dumont to see how Pleasanton is preparing for the Bears the Eagles host district 28 3A contender Lavernia Friday night Pleasanton remain undefeated at 6-0 after pounding Crystal City 46 to nothing last week. The Eagles nearly gained 500 total offensive yards with 322 on the ground. Lavernia is entering Friday's game at 5-1 with its only loss at Class 4A Port Lavaca Calhoun. The Bears beat Taylor 30-16 last week on the road and rushed for over 300 yards in the win. Pleasanton defeated Lavernia 38-7 last season. Here at Pleasanton High School with head coach Tab Dumont. How are you doing today, coach? Doing fine. Great. Well, you know, leading into your district uh, game against Lavernia, what's their offensive formation? Uh, offensive formation, they're, they're very multiple. Uh, they get in a lot of different formations. It'll be anywhere from two tight to three in the backfield to a spread set with one in the backfield. So we've got a lot to prepare for. Okay. How do they line up defensively? Uh, defensively, uh, they, they like to run a man-free coverage. They keep a free safety in the middle of the field. Uh, he reads the quarterback real well. They'll go man wherever our receivers go. They're going to go, uh, and then they line up in a uh, four-man front. If you roll a tight end in the game, then they'll have a five-man front. Okay. Well, you know, at the beginning of the season, Dave Campbell, who many people believe is the bible of football, Texas sure. football. You know, they have um, Somerset, Lavernia, and Pleasanton. Not in that particular order, of course, but just those three teams with bullseyes on their back, so to speak. So going into this, how important is it to get this first district victory of the season? Oh, I, you know, it's important, I mean, because it's district, um, you know, but it's not our whole season on Friday night. Uh, it's a big game because uh, they're a very good football team. Uh, they're 5-1, and one, uh, we're 6-0, and oh, we think we have a good team. Uh, so it's a big game, but it's not our whole season, win or lose. Well, you guys have been averaging 41 points per game, and the Bears have been averaging 31 points per game. Now, how important is it to establish an offensive presence early? Uh, it's going to be very important because they're very good. Okay. Uh, you know, I, their their offense, you know, they they like to control the clock and have long, long extended drives. And so it's going to be important when we're on offense to make sure we're getting first downs to hang on to the ball, make sure we get good possessions. Right, moving the chains, trying moving to score the chains. some touchdowns. Yes, sir. Great. Well, good luck on Friday, Coach. All right. Thank you. 
Next, Jurdenton hits the road to score off with the Cole Cougars in San Antonio Friday. Afterward, Jurdenton head coach Wayne Johnson tells me how he will keep his team focused going into kickoff. After a three-game homestand, the Indians hit the road to San Antonio and square off with the Cole Cougars. The Indians are on a roll after shutting out Brooks Academy in their District 15 2A opener last week. Turdington has won its last five games in a row with its only loss of Fall City in its first game of the season. The Cougars are struggling with a 1-4 record and lost to goalie at 34-8 last week. The Indians crushed Cole last season 43-13 at home. Here at Jurdenton High School with head coach Wayne Johnson. How are you doing today, coach? All right. Well, you're heading into uh, San Antonio this week to face Cole. What's their offensive formation? Uh, they're they're running the old wishbone back when, uh, you know, Texas Longhorn started that off a long time ago, and that's what they're running, the wishbone. Okay. Now, what's their defensive formation? Defense is uh, the split defense, which is what we've seen the last three weeks. So, uh, you know, we ought to be prepared well for that. Good. Now, um, San Antonio Coles only win is against Yorktown this year. So what's it going to take to keep these kids focused going into practice this week? Well, I think the focus is that we want to win the district championship. And, you know, to do that, you need to win every ball game in this district. So uh, they're focused and they know that. So I think we'll be ready to play. Great. Now, after a three-game homestand, Coach, you're heading off to San Antonio. What will it take to make a statement early in this game? Well, you know, we've got to execute our, our game plan. And, um stop the option we haven't seen the wishbone before so we've got to make sure we've got to execute our plan to do that and then uh, we're going to run the football again like we have been and uh, hopefully we can beat them up front great well good luck on friday's kickoff coach Thank you. let's look at poteet's first district contest against somerset on the road after that i spoke with aggie head coach hank willis about a demanding road game as the first district matchup the Aggies stay on the road as they prepare to face the Somerset Bulldogs Friday night. S.A. Antonian shut out Poteet 62 to nothing last week, which marked the first game the Aggies were held scoreless. Somerset's matchup against Quero last week was canceled due to inclement weather. The Bulldogs beat Poteet 49 to six last year. Here at Poteet High School, head coach Hank Willis, how you doing today, coach? Good. Great. Well, you know you're going into your first district game this se- this season against Somerset. What's their offensive formation? Well, you know, offensively, it's kind of that, uh, that that quarterback over there. I don't know his name, <laughs> but he's a good one. You know, he's a good one. He runs. He he does everything. He can throw it a little bit, run it a little bit. And he does a lot of good things. You know, he's a he, he's a fun one to watch. And you know, a few years from now, he's going to be playing on Saturday. So, we're going to enjoy playing against him. Now, what's their defensive formation? Uh, defensively, they like to play cover zero, and they're going to bring a lot of pressure. You know, he's uh, he's done that over there for a long time, and. Uh, you know, they're pretty good. You know, we open up with the best, but, you know, that's what we want. Everything we've done the past few weeks has been geared up for these next few district ball games. So we're going to be ready to go. Now, as you mentioned before, the quarterback, Somerset's quarterback, Coy Detmer Jr., you know, last year they went to the second round, lost in Bastrop to El Campo, and he obviously gained one year of experience, him being a junior. They even have a tailback, Donaldo Perez, being a pretty salty runner himself. Uh, how are you going to look to contain them defensively? Well, you know, they're, they're good from top to bottom, and uh, we're just going to hit both those guys in the mouth, and we're going to try to bring pressure ourselves and see what the, and see what happens, you know. We're going to uh, throw everything we got at them in the kitchen sink, too, and we're going to try to make plays and uh, put some pressure on those guys and just see, see what happens. Now, have you uh, messed a little bit with the offensive playbook as far as trying different things just leading up to district? Well, there's some things that we've left out, you know, and some things that we've been working on in practice, but we're, we're not going to show until Friday night. But, uh, you know, the, these ball games count. The ones before here, you know, they don't mean anything at this point. You know, you can throw records out. You know, we're just going to come play, and we're going to try to win each and every down and, again, see what happens. Great. Well, good luck on Friday, Coach. Finally, Charlotte hosts Bruni for its district opener Friday. Then Trojan head coach Jerry Dominguez talks about how this game marks the beginning of the team's goal from day one. The Trojans are coming off their toughest opponent of the season after losing to Falls City 58 to nothing last week. Charlotte hopes to kick off its District 16-1A Division II schedule off with a victory over Bruni Friday at home. The Badgers are 4-1 after beating Ben Bolt 26-12 last week. The Trojans lost to Bruni 48-6 last season. Here at Charlotte High School with head coach Jeremy Dominguez. How are you doing today, coach? Doing good. Well, you're coming up on your first district contest this week against Bruni. How do they line up offensively? Offensively, they're going to run the slot T, which uh, 
it relies on a lot of misdirection, and uh, we're going to have to be real disciplined on defense, you know, to go ahead and slow them down. But uh, that's their base formation, you know, slot T, misdirection, trap, sweep, bootleg, stuff like that. So, you know, we got our work cut out for us this week. Definitely on the defensive side of uh, uh, trying to attack a slot T, that is a lot of misdirection. Quarterbacks moving, tight ends are moving, a lot of motion. Uh, as far as defense, uh, what are you going to focus on? We're going to focus on stopping the run. We've got to stop number eight. Their uh, returning running back, is, his name's Darley Carizales. He's pretty good. Uh, what they've done this year, though, is they put him at quarterback. Uh, so what we're, what I mean, my main thing is we're going to go ahead and be uh, disciplined. You know, we got we got to read. You know, linebackers got to read. And what I told our kids, all that motion and stuff in the backfield with all those running backs, it doesn't matter. You know, with those front seven from uh, center guard tackle to tight ends, that's what we got to focus on. You know, they're going to tell us where the football's going. And we got to be able to trust that, you know, and fly to the football and make plays. And that's what we plan on doing. We plan on attacking this week. We're not going to sit back and read. We're going to force the issue this week on defense. Now, how do they line up defensively? Defensively, they're going to run a 4-3. You know, they're kind of multiple. They'll sometimes they'll line up in a 50. They are pretty aggressive. They have one pretty good linebacker, number 50. He's a returner from last year also. I believe he's a senior. Uh, but as far as, you know, defensive line, they do fly upfield. You know, Coach Gates is going to try to – has done a real good job of putting a game plan together to kind of exploit that a little bit. They're quick. They're going to get after us. But, you know, watching them on the film, we're just as quick, if not quicker, than they are. Now, what's going to be your number one focus in practice going into Friday's kickoff? Friday kickoff, like we've been telling them, is just stay focused, you know, and, and stick to the plan. You know, we've been working hard. Our kids have been working hard from uh, from last November till now, you know, with the off season, seven on seven lineman challenge, you know, the summer. You know, we've had a, our bumps along the way. We played a pretty good team last year, uh, last week, and our focus, you know, from day one has been W4DT, you know, working for that district title, you know, and it's right there. You know, our kids believe in it. We've had them working hard, you know, they're hungry. And uh, it's going to be a battle Friday night, but, you know, I'm not guaranteeing anything. But if we do what we're supposed to do, you know, I think we can come out victorious. <clears throat> now, what's it going to take to to win the turnover ratio on Friday? Yeah, just basically uh, they have some issues, you know, with the center uh, quarterback exchange. We're going to try to exploit that a little bit. We're going to move uh, one of our kids, you know, personnel-wise, we're going to move him over their center and outweigh him. He outweighs him by about 70, 75 pounds. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can go ahead and mess their mesh up a little bit and stuff like that. But they also have trouble, you know, hanging on to the football. So, you know, our focus is strip the football, strip the football, strip the football. They, they're hard runners. So first guy to wrap up, next two or three forwards, start stripping the football. We're going, we're going to try to win the turnover battle that way. Well, thank you so much for your time, Coach. Now, before we go, we are rapidly approaching 1,100 follows on Twitter, so don't forget to follow us for your latest scores of your favorite area teams at a PE1909. Join the conversation at hashtag MyBCSports. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Inside Brush Country Sports. I'd like to thank you for watching at home or wherever you may be. We also want to extend our gratitude to South Texas Orthopedics. Signing off, I'm Chris Filoteo. Head out there and enjoy your Friday night lights.